Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to talk to you today about something that is just blowing up around us. Let's talk today about aliens and spacecraft and spacemen. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, on July 26, 2023, there was a congressional hearing to talk about aliens, to talk about little green men, to talk about spaceships and technology from a far distance land. I mean, this is literally science fiction becoming reality all around us. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of it, right? You don't know what to make of it. We're just sitting here looking, we're wondering, we're watching, we're, we're looking at it from an observant eye. I mean, we're, we're 40 years from when Vulcan is projected to come down and, and meet with us. Uh, that's, that's April 5th, 2063. So, so we have some time before Gene Roddenberry projected that Vulcan was going to come down and then usher in this, this era of peace, usher in this era of unity for the entire earth. However, I'm not really sure where, where, where Scully and Fox fit all into this. It's, it's as if this congressional hearing a couple of days ago literally is reopening dun, 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 the X-Files and the Smoky Man is just burning a heater somewhere. But this is literally seemingly science fiction. Are, are, are they trying to, to provide breadcrumbs for all of us? What are, what's going on? And so right now in our world, we need a biblical perspective to what is happening in our world right now. So we, we, we have to come to figure some things out. We have to, we have to look at it from what the Bible says. And, and so many times we, we have these science fiction narratives and these green goblin narratives and and it's kind of confusing to try to figure out where they fit in the bible <clears throat> but it's no it's no joke that we are living in a time of a heightened state of conspiracy right I mean, we're three years out of a pandemic. There's people that doubt uh, anything surrounding the pandemic. There, uh, we have uh, a time in our world and a time in our country, especially where everything is being doubted. Uh, everything that we know as true or everything that we know as fact is now coming on the scene as, well, is that true? Is that a fact? What do I believe? What, what, what do I do? Well, and as Christians, as Bible believers, as people of the name of Jesus, we have to look to the scripture to define what is going on right now. And I want to propose to you today to not simply be fascinated with the headlines, not simply to, to look to the stars and hopefully that you will find some sort of alien craft or some sort of orb or some sort of UAP that you'll be able to document on your iPhone or on your Android phone, you know, because you think you're more superior. No. I propose to you today that we look to the scripture and we determine what is happening in our world and what is happening right now. Why would they want to place all of these? Uh, why, why would Congress want to have this meeting? Why would Congress want to, to, to be able to look? I mean, are we talking about 
uh, national security? Are we talking about global security? Uh, are we interested in things like that? Or, or is there really something else that they want us to know? I'm not coming to you with some alternative conspiracy theory. No, like, like they're the ones that are just, Hey man, what, what's happening? Hey, look at, look at what, look at what's going on here. Here's, you know, all of these pilots and admirals and whistleblowers that are claiming to claiming, you know, technology from another world and, and beings from another place and, and crafts that are not technologically known now. So I propose to you that you take this opportunity to look further into the scripture. <coughs> so many times we, we look at things and we hear information about aliens and spacecraft and little green men and orbs and UAPs and Tic Tacs flying in the, in, in the uh, aircraft's radar. And we don't know what to do with it. We do know that the Bible does record the word alien, but it is nothing like the word alien that we have come to know. Uh, when the Bible does record the word alien, we're not talking about an alien from another place. We're not talking about an alien from another, um, another world or another planet. We're not talking about uh, a close encounter of a third kind. So when you do read scripture, please understand that you're not looking and reading the word alien as an alien from a science fiction fairy tale. So, so that's one thing to note. Another thing to, to note is that there are in the Bible, in scripture, things that we don't understand. Um, a lot of times people will refer to Elijah and the wheel within the wheel and when he was raptured at, in, by the chariot that they can surmise that they could that could be some sort of alien craft that took him there's scripture in Genesis when we talk about the Nephilim and that uh, subject matter alone opens up a proverbial Pandora's box of more and more conspiracies concerning the Bible, concerning our world, and concerning our existence. One thing that we have to recognize as Christians when we're approaching this subject matter is that we have to approach, and especially as Bible believers that believe in uh, Jesus, that believe in Jesus, that believe in the power and the name of Jesus, we have to understand and we have to look at this and, uh, and know that there is spiritual activity across our earth. We have to uh, know and understand that we are people that believe in angels and we believe in fallen angels. Uh, I'm not here to try to tell you that um, the things that have been talked about in the congressional hearing are angelic or demonic. But if we look at the scripture and then we look at the world around us, one can surmise or one can believe that, hey, this is a possibility that we, what we are seeing is spiritual activity. I'm not one to sit here and tell you that, uh, I'm not one to sit here and tell you that we're uh, living on the cusp of the world as we know it. I'm by no means trying to promote a, an end-time prophetic uh, impulse surrounding this subject matter, although the case can be made for one. The Bible does tell us, again, if we're going to look at this topic from what the Scripture says, biblically from a Christian approach that we as Christians are indeed looking for our coming Messiah. Jesus upon his 
ascent into heaven said that he was going to come back. Prophecies have been stated that he's going to come back. He has sent his Holy Spirit down to us in Acts 2 so that we can, uh, we can make it long enough until his ultimate return. I don't know about you, but I am looking for the return of the king. And when I see congressional hearings about aliens and crafts and technologies from another world, I simply look at, well, I simply look at that from a perspective of this is trying to negate and make silly and, and falsify the return of Jesus Christ. If it's not the re if we're not talking about the return of Jesus, then we are simply talking about the Antichrist. Something that is not Jesus, is not the Christ, must be the antithesis of that, which is the Antichrist. So when we are having congressional hearings and we're learning about UAPs and technologies from another world, when I open up the Bible, and as, in, and as you open up the Bible, look, look around you, pray, seek after the Spirit, read your Bible, and say, and, and ask God, God, what is going on? As I, as I search for your return, Lord, as I search for your return, and I prepare myself for, for the coming, the second coming of you. Could this be a deterrent? Could this be a detraction? Could this be a distraction? Could this be something that is simply trying to falsify the word of God and falsify scripture and falsify my faith altogether? So if it's not promoting Jesus, if it's not promoting Christianity, if it's not promoting a biblical narrative, then therefore it is the antithesis of those things, and therefore it is anti those things. So then I have to, then I have to read further, and I have to understand, okay, if it's not pro-Christ, then it must be anti-Christ. If it's not pro-Jesus, then it must be anti-Jesus. If it's not pro the Holy Spirit coming down into my life and filling me, then it must be anti those things. And so I, I, I promote to you today, I promote to you today not, not to open one conspiracy with another conspiracy, not to, not to promote uh, the unveiling of of this congressional hearing and that conspiracy with a, with a different conspiracy. But what I promote to you today and what I imply is that we have to, as Christians, as Bible believers, we have to look at the Bible and say, okay, Lord, what is this? Why is this? And then if it's not of you, then it must be anti-you. If it's not a promotion of you, then it must be an anti-you. So I would warn you, don't be so fast to find answers surrounding this. Don't be so quick to make a judgment surrounding this. But I implore you, I, I, I beg of you to seek and to search the scriptures, to seek and to pay attention to the narratives, to understand what is happening across this earth, and understand the narratives that we are hearing at hashtag UFO Twitter. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added unto you. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 says, Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. And do not fear what they fear. And do not dread it. Fear not, my, my fellow believers. 
Fear not, my fellow Christians. Fear not, my fellow Bible believers. This is not something that we should fear in, no, but this is something that we should rejoice in. For his return is imminent. The king is coming. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. We need to provide a biblical answer to what is happening in our world. And if it's not a promotion of Jesus, then it must be an anti. If it's not uh, uh, promoting the kingdom of God and the advancement of the kingdom of God, then it is an anti. 